Dave here. How are you? Today is the 15th of March 2020. Hope you've had a good week. Uh, we've had the news this week that the Brisbane Timber Tools and Artisans Show at Brisbane has been postponed. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Beyond my control, I would have gone, but uh, not happening. People that have entered the competition, obviously, <laughs> sorry, no competition. But thanks for entering. Okay, let me see what we've got on the show today. This is a very mixed show. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of video. I'll do that right now of the uh, this guy here. We'll flip this picture over. And I'm going to show you a picture of the last part we're doing, which is spraying the inside. Now, to be totally boring, I'm going to do another coat on that. I did that about an hour ago. So what we're going to try and do is it's a quick drying paint and it's a satin finish. It almost looks like black japanning. That's why I'm using it. So I'm going to go down there. We'll put another coat on now. And by the end of the show, I should be able to put that on it and we'll see how it's coming along. Before I go down, I'll quickly read through the rest of what's happening. Uh, we're going to take the top off the box that I built around about two months ago. Um, there's an interesting development that's happened with that box while it's been sitting off to the side under an air conditioning unit. Something that's a heads up for everyone. Uh, oil a hose clamp. Why would you do it? I'll tell you why and go through it. Uh, belt sand apply to thickness. I've got the, the, sorry, not belt sand, drum sand. I've got the drum sander set up here. I'm going to go through changing the belt on it just to, to some people that might be interested, we're going to make a spacer to help with cutting this lid off the box by using the router. You can do it with a table saw as well if you wish. Um, cut sandpaper. Oh, the sandpaper tubes that I made. I'm going to do a cut on those, but I'm going to do it at an angle to make it so it's almost like a knife for cutting the paper off as well. Uh, alternate bases for routers. You know, there's some interesting things out there. You may not be aware of them. Uh, centering mandrel and bush, so if you want to be able to center, I'll go, I'll go through all that. Uh, <laughs> blue label on a CA bottle. Now that might sound really lame, but it's interesting and I've worked out a little way to do it very effectively. Uh, wood show postponed, I've already spoken about that. Protractor use, and it is different to the TSO model. Basically, I'm going to go through this one. This is mine. And this one is TSO's. You can see the totally different looking animal. They do have a couple of things in common, but that's about as far as it goes. I'm going to show you why I've designed mine my way. I was picking up glasses. I've already got them on. This is another pair. It's getting a bit sad, isn't it? Um, the plane. The plane. <laughs> I'll show you my plane. If you haven't seen the video of me making it, which is, was released during the week, I've got it here with me at the moment, and I can talk through some finer details. And then we'll put the knob back onto the 220. Here we go. I'm going to switch the cameras down to the other end. And I think that's the one. Yep, there it is. I'm going to go down there right now. Oh, the weather has been absolutely beautiful yesterday and uh, today it started raining again. So you'll hear rain on the roof every now and then. Now, this is how it's coming on. It's, I'm really happy with it. There's a couple of spots where people are going to say, Dave, you should have spent a little bit more time preparing it. But you know what? I like it. So it's got Turner 220 and there's a number six there. I don't know what that's all about. Made in Australia down the bottom. And it is a satin paint. This stuff, I can't speak more highly of it. It's what I've done all of the other Turners with. And a Stanley as well. And it comes up beautifully. The thing with this, don't put too much on in one go. there 
and done. And with spray paint, I don't know if you know, but when you finish painting, turn it upside down and give it a spray. I'm going to do it off camera. I don't want it on my benches. And it, it runs clear. That cleans the nozzle. All right. I'll move that out of the way to the side. I'm going to move this. Well, I, I don't have to leave it on there anymore. I can take it off. It was only for the overspray. You can see I've masked all of it. And uh, it's going to come up nice. I'm going to move this down the other end of the workshop because we're going to be working here with the router. Give me a sec. I'm going to hide this all the way down the other end so it doesn't get any dust landing on it. It's going to go under. Let me swing this camera back. Under, under, under. There we go, back here. I've put it underneath the little thickness planer under its outfeed tables so nothing will fall on it. All right. You enjoying the show so far? All right. Going to go back down to the other camera and we'll go through the next part. Put the eye muffs on in a second. Now here I have my little DeWalt trimmer. It lives underneath in this area here. It's very, very handy. I have it hooked up at the moment to... It just lives there. I have it hooked up to the dust extractor, the little Festool. I'm going to raise it up so that, just for you to remember, this is the box we were working on. And isn't it lovely? This is the one that's got the edge that I book matched. So I managed to get the grain to follow right the way around the box. There is no break in the con continuity of the grain. It's just magic. Now, one of the things I did say that it was been living under the air conditioner and it developed a split. And I'm going to have a hard time trying to find the split. It's there somewhere. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't have Corona. That's just a little bit of the spray that's affecting me. I've lost the rotten thing. I swear there was a, there was a split in it. My oh, goodness. It's really important because I don't want... To cut the area, I can always glue it, but yeah. All right, look, I'll move that back up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut halfway between these splines. So this is going to be the top, this is going to be the base, and I have to raise it up so that the trimmer will come through and not much more. Can you see that? I think that's about enough. So I'll lock the trimmer in position there. This is a 5.32nd, uh, I think, which is around just on four millimeters. Now, to stop this wandering all over the place, I have the option of these two fences that I made for this. This one is a dust collection specialty and it works really well for that. But the thing is, it's not going to be over there. It would be back there. So I'm going to go with the other one that's the clear sheet. And instead of going that way, I'll go this way because I'm going to be back. This is just some 5 16 T-bolts into the track. And these are Craig tracks and I have Craig mini tracks. And I had to grind the side of the T-bolts so that they could fit inside this track. All right, coming back a little bit, I think about there is going to be very, very nice. Lock that. And the other one. And going anywhere. Okay, so that's nice. I want to go back just a little bit. Beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one pass right through the base and then I'm going down the other end and we're going to make a spacer that fits in there nice and neat so that well, you'll see why. Put the eye muffs on and 
This is going to be a little bit noisy. You may want to turn the sound down a little bit. Going slowly. That is a very, very, very neat cut. Now I'm going to go down. We'll come back in a minute, but I'm going to go down. We're going to use the belt sander to size a spacer for there. The drum sander, I should say. I keep calling it a belt sander. Well, it's got a sanding belt in it. Flip the cameras. To there. Got it. All right. Lovely. Now I've got this set up. I'm going to have camera in the corner, that corner I think, wherever it is, and the other one. Let me see if I've got them. Indeed I do. That's a little bit better. All right. Before I run this through, I might just show you quickly how I change this uh, paper in this. I'll be using this paper again, but on the side here, You'll see that there's a spring-loaded pin. It's the thing I, it's, I guess it's a common thing with these sanders these days. It holds the clamp for me, so I haven't got to worry. A little bit of backwards and forwards, and when I release it back there, that's how it goes. It's very, very easy. And then putting it back on. Oh, there's just a little spring clamp under here. Uh, and then putting it back on, I hold it so that it's parallel to the end of the drum and then it starts to cut. They cut this paper, you know, specifically for these things. You can cut your own. You could, if you wanted to, bring that over there. What you could do is you could keep one of these belts and use it as a template if you wanted to, to use someone else's paper. The coloured paper that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later on in the show, I think you can do that with it as well. Maybe I should do that on one of the shows. Because I think it ends up being around about one third of the price. Okay, I'm going to push this back in. And that... Whoop. Gotcha. That's locked it. Slide her in slowly. And then let it go. That should be fun. Should fun? <laughs> What's fun? <laughs> it should be good. All right. Close the lid. And here's the next part of what, what we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to switch the camera back again to the main one. There. When I went to put the dust hose on the machine yesterday, because I try and do a little bit these days without... Um, looking too much of an idiot. Anyway, this hose clamp was really, really fighting with me. And I, I was struggling to turn it. I think it was a waste of time, rotten bloody thing. Anyway, what I did was I got some oil. You know, when I step back a little bit, aluminium ladders, you know those ones that fold up, they've got four sections and they've got these special hinges that lock and click, 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 click. Mine was stuffing around big time. So I put some oil on it. Best ladder I've ever owned. We think that aluminium doesn't need any uh, oil on it. It does, and it works so much better. Give it a try. If you've got one of those ladders, oil the hinges. You'll, you'll be amazed. Do the same thing with these. So put some oil on it, spun it through a few times, got some expensive paper cloth. <laughs> Hasn't everyone gone crazy with toilet paper and things like that? Anyway, got some, cleaned it all up, and now works like a new one. So I'll pop this on. It's just crazy. Now, also on my dust hose, I have, I have one of these little straps that's got a hook on the end. For one reason, I hold it up against the wall over there when it's out of the way. And the other reason, it's quite handy to hold, 
pull it along anywhere along to hold it out of the way of the machine you're using it with. Just a little tip. Put the hose clamp on. Put that on. And then, oh, look at that. That's easy. Oh, that's such a change, such a difference. See, this thing here, I can hook around the back if I wanted to. I could put another one further down the track here if I wanted. I'm going to open the blast gate and open the blast gate down the back. And I do have that special thing hang off my hip. Uh, open that one up. Close that for the moment. All right, switch the cameras. And to this one, transition. I must. Again, this might make a little bit of noise. What I'm going to do is this piece of ply here, I'm going to thickness down so it'll fit into there just nicely. It's very close, but I want it to be a really nice fit. Ah, what are we up to? I have to lower it down. We're getting to about the minimum height. This machine, there we go, that's good. One little bit more. Turn on the dusty. Ha <laughs> ha! And this, plug it in, David. I've got the cable running down the side of the hose as well. So it's always there. There we go. I was doing there was just sneaking it down a little bit as it was going through until I heard it grab. Good. And I'm going to keep on bringing it over here to test it. Go again. veneers that they use on the plywood are very thin. On the surface one that is anyway. Run it through again at that thickness. See the difference there? If you run it through a few times, you gotta allow the sander to actually sand. See if we can take a bit more off. Lovely. Now I'm going to flip her over and work the other side. That's getting real close. You know what? That's just a touch.
I think that's going to do it. Beautiful. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, switch the cameras again to the main one. Now, the reason I've done that, and I want it tight, is that as I go through and keep on cutting this box, I don't want it to close in on the cutter. So this spacer is the right width so let's see. and the right height. See that? That's just perfect. Now I will keep this as well. I'll just keep this in a drawer and uh, I think it'll be fine just on its own. I may put a little hole in the top there so that when I put it in, uh, there's different ways of doing it. Maybe elastic band around that so it can't drop down on the final pass. I'm, I'm just thinking ahead. How are we doing? 21 minutes. This is excellent. I'm going to write things off on my list here when I find my pen. Yep, I'll use a pencil. Okay, we've done that, done that, uh, done that, done that, done that. Change the paper in the drum. We're down to the fifth item. Finish cutting the box lid off. <laughs> Tragic. All right. But it's interesting. You know, these things, if you didn't know, like there's a lot of people watching who'll go, yeah, Dave, we've seen all this before. We know it. But every day someone else is starting this little journey down the rabbit hole of <laughs> woodwork, <laughs> spending money on machines and tools and everything, getting the bug. Uh, and I'm sure they're appreciating what I'm saying. All right, the next thing we'll go down to the other camera again when I find my IMAF switch there just here. It's a shame the show's not on because George was in the booth beside me down at Canberra and it was going to be the same thing up at Brisbane. He was going to be had the booth beside me. We'd yabber away and you know I'd be wearing these demonstrating and he'd say, look at this, look what Dave's doing. It's a bit of fun. All right, back down to the other one and I'll take this stuff down with me. Right, down here. Now, I haven't moved anything here. This is very important. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from this side to that side because I've already got that cut there. And then, oh, I don't know if it's going to make that much difference because I'm going to finish off anyway. Yep, oh, look, I'll go this way. I'll go it. Why not? So I'm going to do two ends and then we're going to do the, the face. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to do this end. Looking good. I'm going to turn it off for a second. Wait for it to stop. Now you can see the reason we're doing this is watch this. I don't want that to happen while I'm doing the last cut. This is where my plywood is going to come into effect. We're going to slide that all the way down, but so it's not touching the cutter at this stage. So I will be holding like this. Now, this is a situation where I say, I could put a big elastic band around here and then that's going to hold it in position. But I'm, I'm going to hold it by my hands here, nice and tight, as I go and finish the last cuts. Here we go. Turn you on.
Let's have a look. Now that was worthwhile doing. All of the corners are perfect. In this particular box, I don't think I'm going to put an insert at the bottom. I may, but I don't think I will. Um, so I've got the base already sanded. Nice walnut. And I got the top there. Yep. I should have really, <laughs> I should have really cut the other side off, shouldn't I? Anyway, not to worry. It looks just lovely. And that's something that we can continue on with. Is that the right end? Or not? Yes, it is. So you can see the grain is still all looking pretty good. That's magic. What do you think of that? Come on, you've got to give me a comment or a thumbs up for that. That's going to be beautiful. All right, back to the other end. Before, first of all, I'm going to drop this down. So it's not an accident waiting for me. Magic. All right, camera's back again. to this end. Cool, where are we up to? Quick drink. Pencil. Finish cutting the box lid off. Cut sandpaper tube uh, and show the paper is flat. I'm going to move that camera over here beside the table saw. This one you might also be interested in. I had a few people after I did this video on, oh, what was it on? It was on making little tubes because these rolls of sandpaper that I buy tend to have a life of their own. And if you don't, if you don't um, flatten them out, they're a problem. And they don't like to stay flat, even if you flatten them out. They don't like to stay, they, they curl back up again. Doesn't matter what you do. I did those tubes about three weeks ago and I take the paper out, it's nice and flat to start and then it starts to want to curl back. So I have to store them that way around. I'm gonna have a look at the other camera, see if it's okay. And I need to tip it up just a little bit. Should be okay there. All right, that's better. All right, here we go over to the other camera now. Now, some people will also say, What's this Carl Cam thing? Well, Carl's a guy who used to watch, he probably still does, and he very generously bought me a camera. So I've named the camera after him. All right, here is my 320 roll. And there's the sandpaper inside. Now, if you've bought this stuff, you'll know that it wants to roll itself back up. Look how it's sitting now. That's rolled out perfectly flat. But the thing is, give it time and this will start to curl up again. So I, that's why I've got to store it. Now, I've set the saw over at 45 degrees. I've got a fine cut to blade in it. It's actually a Perspex blade. It's not Perspex itself, but it's designed for cutting plastics and Perspex. So I thought it'd be the, the best one for here. I'm going to cut a slot and I'm going to do it using the grip up push block. Now I've opened, the, opened it up so that it's getting good points of purchase. And then I've put the side on and it's going to be my rest. So it's going to hold it steady and I'm going to push it up against the fence. Now making sure that I have clearance here, so this isn't going to hit the fence, the side of the pipe is. This is two and a half inch PVC, I think it is, PVC pipe. 
63 millimeters in Australian speak. And that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to open the other dust port up down here, which has, open this one, close that one. Turn her on. I always try and turn the dusty on first. Oh, I've got it on the same circuit. Now these are both um, heavy duty machines. They pull a lot of startup ampage. My saw and my dust extractor. So I don't, I have a few different circuits in the workshop here. So I've got the one on each circuit at the moment. So you can hear that winding up. It may or may not pull, pull any dust from this. PVC is pretty hard to cut, especially good seeing it's in a pipe. There we go. Now the trick is not to push too hard. The harder you push down, the more it's going to want to close up at the back. Now you notice I do have the riving knife there. See what I mean about closing up at the back? This little bit here. Turn that off. <laughs> I like this. Some people had made suggestions to... Um, this is so much better. Some people have made suggestions, this thing on my hip to get one of those retractable things so I can pick it up and aim it above different things that are hanging around. All right, here we go. Roll this back up again. So this will save me having to do this every time I want sandpaper. And this was a suggestion after I did the video. A few people made comments that, Dave, why don't you put a slice down there and I thought, rather than just do a 90 degree, if I do a 45, I've got a cutting edge there. So instead of putting it in that way, if I put it in this way and do that, I now, you can see the edge there for cutting. But the thing is, this stuff tends to follow the grain or the, the, the weave when you cut it. Like so. So I can pull it out, grab a hold of it here, or push down hard on it. And it's waiting for the next one. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. So that'll live in the, in the um, cupboard or up on the shelf here. In that manner, pop that up. So thank you very much for those suggestions. And switch the camera back here. Moving on quite well. All right, cut the sandpaper. And we did talk about it curling. Alternative bases for routers. At the moment, I'm doing a video on that router table down the back there. And it's funny, you, when you start, when you start doing a video, you think, yeah, yeah, I know all about this. But you learn as you go along and there's always a better way to do something. And I've discovered a couple of ways that I thought this is a lot easier. One of the things that I've done with this thing, and I put a post on Instagram and Facebook, is that when the router table insert plate, like the router plate, the thing you mount the router to, is sitting in the router table, I got some masking tape and I put some tape on the front and on the right hand side. And I folded it right the way under and I wrote F and turn the thing over and the F there as well. So no matter where the router plate was or during the, you know, screwing it on and drilling holes and everything, I knew where all my reference points were. Because I don't know about you, but turn something upside down and over and then you go, now, am I sure? Before I drill these holes, I really do have to know the right position. So there's a little tip there. Now, one of the things that I have here on my old Makita and I may even mount this in a table as well. But this has got, I think this is an Oneida product. This is a new base plate. I took the, the original base plate off and I put this one. It's got slots that it fits on just about any router. 
and it has a dust port. Now this old router, if you've got one like this, you'll know these never had dust ports, you know, dust. <laughs> this was before, before anyone had heard of coronavirus. Okay, so the dust port is lined up at the back. There's a little uh, detachment thing that goes onto my hose and you click the whole thing in one go. Bloody brilliant. And also I think there's a swivel that can go in there as well, which acts as kind of a dust shroud if you're doing edges. Now the other thing that I've got is if you want to use a bush. Now these things here are copy bushes that go, this is a set of them that I use every now and then. I don't use bushes a lot, I normally use bearings, but anyway, these are bushes if I've made a template and I want to follow it without using, pardon me, without using a bearing cutter, I'd use something like this. A, a prime example of that for say one of these little guys down the end here, pull that one out. If I was doing some signs and I was following a sign template, now I think Rockler sell a set of uh, letters and numbers that you can lock together. They, they dovetail together. You lay it out, hold it down with some tape, and then you get your router with one of these things and a little round nose or a V cutter, a little quarter inch diameter guy, and you follow the letter, follow, follow, follow. And it pushes up against that little protrusion. Now the, the trick is to get those bushes into an old router like this. Now you can buy inserts that will go in there, or if, you've, if you find that your router hasn't got one of those, or you can't find the insert because your router's a million years old, you can get these things. Now this is another universal base plate. It has a lot of holes on it and it'll probably fit your router, but if it doesn't, it's no biggie to drill some more holes, countersink them, and then you put this on instead of your router's base plate. To find the center, you might say, yeah, I can do that. But if you don't have it dead center and you're using one of these small bushes, you might find that your router cutter is actually going to collide with the side there because you only have to be a millimeter or a half a millimeter out and it's not going to fare well for you and all of your pattern work will be offset. So this is called a centering mandrel. See that looks like a golf tee and it's brass. So my suggestion is if you get one of these put a small bush in it and they finish flush. See so there's a little rebate. Can you see that? Is it rebate or you guys in the States are called a rabbit. R-A-B-B-E-T. It's not an IT. It's not the Christmas bunny or Easter bunny. Or <laughs> Christmas bunny. Easter bunny. Anyway, it drops into there. You've got a little clamp ring that goes on the back and locks it on. And that's held in there nicely for you. The mandrel goes down the middle like so. You put a quarter inch collet in your router or even if you've got a trimmer you can still use these things because they're all quarter inch basically. And then leave it up a little bit, tighten it up in the collet, tighten the chuck up and then raise, raise the cutter, or sorry, lower the cutter. So you've got to pull the router back from it. And as it comes down, it's going to find the center. And that's all there is to it. It's not going to be anywhere else. Then you can anchor this to your router. What do you reckon? <laughs> They're pretty clever, aren't they? And then you can use all of these copy rings and go crazy, make signs, do drip grooves around the sides of, you know, any pattern that you make, this will follow it. There's all different sizes. Anyway, I thought you might be interested. Um, no one's given me these things. Oh, they gave, oh, sorry, Oneida gave me that dust uh, boot for the Makita, which was the universal thing. Of course, I asked them. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's turned that router into something that lived in the cupboard and hardly ever used because it was generating so much dust to a router that I use a fair bit now. All right, but the other things here, this thing, no, mandrel, got it, bought it. All right, 
what's the next thing? Glasses on. Any questions about that? If you're watching the premiere, make a comment over here. Or if after the show's happened and you're just watching this as a recording, leave some comments down there as well. Let me know if these are the kind of things you're interested in watching. I was doing the plane project and I rushed it because I want to try and get it ready for the show, which is now cancelled or sorry, postponed. And I knew that I had Chris coming and then he didn't come because of the coronavirus. He spent a couple of weeks in Japan and it really has put a spanner in the works. So that continual project has stopped. We will do another project soon. I'm thinking of doing a block plane version of that plane. And also I might do some more work on the dressing table because it's sitting out there. I haven't done anything to it since I was doing stuff on the show. Centering Mandarin Bush, we've done that. Glue label on a CA bottle. Now, why would I even talk about this? See these things? They're color coded. That is the green one. <laughs> There's a green, a yellow and a red. They're all different viscosities. Now, this isn't your standard one that you'd get, you know, that, you know, from a proprietary store. I got these ones from Aldi. I should have got more of them because they work very, very well. Uh, anyway, it's medium CA. So it's the one in the middle, mi middle viscosity. The label fell off. Now, why did the label fall off? Well, the bottle design is so that the glue won't stick to it. Now, super glue sticks to just about anything, as you'd know. And uh, so I thought I could just throw the label in the bin and then put this away and be done with it. But then, you know, I'd forget. <laughs> I'd forget what type of glue it was. So I got some two inch wide packing tape. And I made it a bit longer than the length of the label in total and a bit longer than the whole perimeter of the bottle. I put the label into the middle of that tape and then I slowly wrapped the tape around and it went right the way around and over itself. And then it was also hanging down at the bottom and at the top. I curled those over and made it stick to itself. So it doesn't have to rely on sticking to the actual bottle itself because it's kind of enveloped the whole thing. So it's just a little tip. You know, this done. <laughs> What's the next thing? Uh, the wood show has been postponed. Yes, it has. How are we doing? 45, 43 minutes. All right, the protractor and TSO's protractor. Or oh, that's not their protractor. This is TSO's triangle, which is really, really nice. Very, very handy for using on top of my Stanton bench for cutting angles with the track saw. Say I've got the track saw set up at the edge here. This is very thin. This is only about a quarter of an inch thick. Very thin in comparison to mine, which is 18 millimeters thick, three quarters of an inch thick. So it can go underneath the track really well. It's got one really long straight edge down here, which will support your timber as you're going under, the, as it's under the track, if you want to hold it off at an angle that's not 45 degrees, or it's not 60 degrees or 30 degrees, or 22 and a half degrees. This will rotate and you can lock it wherever you want. Now, which works great. It's very, very square and you know, there's a lot in there. Now mine has been built specifically for my benches, mostly for the apron. I'll spin this around, why not? Because then I can give you a perfect example of what it's all about. All right. That might work just lovely. And I haven't even got any dogs out yet. Ah, oh, where are we? And I've got one more dog that I've got to get. Give me a sec. Oh, and I think I'll put them all out <laughs> at the back. Um, this one might work. It might. Very, very close. Anyway, if you've watched the video that I did on, um, on, on building the plane, you'll see that I used this support at the front as well. Now, I'll switch the cameras over so we can see what's happening down the front here. It's where we'll have two cameras again. There. And 
bring it back to about there. That's okay. And up a touch. Now you see in my bench, on the apron here, I've put some inserts. So these are eight millimeter inserts. One, two, three. What I've decided to do is forget the other two. I'm only going to do these. So going forwards, all of my benches are now going to have one here, which is three dog holes in, and the same over on the other side, three dog holes in, there'll be another one over here, which you can't quite see. It's a couple back that way. Now, it works. I, I have some, uh, John's made some dogs for me that will fit in from the back and can clamp on, but at the moment, I'll just do that. Now you notice also with my design, it's flush at the top. It's never going to come past the top. If I was to use the one from TSO, it's going to rotate down there somewhere. Uh, not really interested in that. I want support up at the top. Also, you remember that with all my stuff, I design it. Let's, let's put that one in. I design it so it's kid friendly. So even this corner here is not sharp. These aren't sharp. Wherever it goes, it's just going to be beautiful. Now, I've got your common points. This is uh, 45, um, 60 and 30 on both sides. And then this one is 22 and a half, 67 and a half, I think they are. So I can lock those in into the dog hole at the bottom. I spent, I spent a long time working off this center in, in CAD to get these absolutely perfect. So they're 192 millimeter centers. It's pivot, everything pivots off this point here. Now down here, I can take that out and put this in. And that's a clamp at any position that I want to put it. And because I've got the grip tape up here as well, it's not moving. These are all five degree increments. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, except for this one, which is, is um, two and a half degrees, so it's centered between the pair. So that's the protractor, and it's an accessory that I'll be um, offering with the benches as well from now on, which is great. I th they're not expensive. They're, um, these are the birch ply as well, which is really, really stable architectural face. Absolutely beautiful. And also, the new benches that I've brought out are birch as well. So I'll be selling those. I don't really want to turn this into an advertisement, but I thought I'd just let you know what's going on in the background, because this is all stuff I was going to talk about at the show. Um, the birch ply cost me a little bit more, but I think it's worth it. It's extremely stable, it's, and it's the same thickness all the way through. It's a joy to use on the CNC. If you're thinking about doing plywood stuff on the CNC, get birch. All right, so there we go. Wood show, the protractor, the plane, the plane. Here we go. This, a lot of people have probably been waiting for this part. This is the hand plane that we were building on the show. So the bottom is Jarrah, and I've waxed the base. The sides are Paduke, and they've just come up beautifully. You'll see here is the brass rod, which the lever cap pushes against. So basically when I tighten the, that knob up on the lever cap, it jams it, the lever cap up against the rod and pushes back down on the plane, plane blade so it doesn't move. Now you might notice also on the side here that I've put grub screws in down here. Now these are a 5 16 grub screw and they are to stop any sideways movement at the base where the plane is, where the blade is. You find that Veritas do this on their really exclusive planes. They're really, really nice. So I thought, I'll go up, I bought a couple of dollar fifty screws, bought a tap, a five sixteenth tap, and there you go. Watch the video. It's 
I take you through the whole build. Vicky said I probably spent too much time on the sanding part. I don't know. I, I like watching that kind of stuff uh, because if you, if you skip through a video too quickly, like if you skip through the process too quickly, it doesn't look as though as much effort has gone into producing. You go bang, 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 bang. There's a plane. Well, I don't know. You tell, tell me, what do you think? Would you prefer to see something that's like that, three minutes and it's all over? Or would you rather watch the process and be involved? That's, that's, I like to watch those kind of things where I get involved. But uh, it's, it's really nice. The finish on it, the reason I put wax on the base and I've put a hard finish on the top here was the wax on the base because it's going to wear. The top section here, I want, because I'm going to be holding onto it, my hands are going to be dirty now and then, you know, I, I didn't want the timber to get stained underneath if it had only wax on it. Uh, so I built it up and basically I used the spray as, it's a non-yellowing spray that I used and it's designed for plastic, steel and wood. So it's really, really nice. Um, it's called, it's from Rust-Oleum. There you go. If you're in Australia, Rust-Oleum, it's a spray paint, uh, clear, gloss or satin if you want. And I think Bunnings have it. Um, anyway, just, just, just a by the by. And it's, uh, I used it basically instead of a shellac. So I used it to fill the grain and to give it a hard, hard base. That's why they used to use shellac in the old days. Filling the grain before and, and giving it a hard base before they applied the French polish over the top of the, of the wax at the end. So I, I basically replicated their process in a, to a certain point. Now people might also say, Dave, you used 1200 wet and dry and you used you know, 1000 uh, Festal Platen. You've gone too fine with those, with those uh, cutting back in between coats. I don't think so, not with, with that Rust-Oleum because it's designed to go on to metals and plastics. They're a very, very fine finish already. So it, it, it gets a hold and it's not releasing. It's just magic. I wanted to get it as smooth to touch as it is smooth to look at. I wanted, when people pick this up, me in particular, I use these things all the time. People say to me, Dave, why do you use these other th machines? Why do you use Festool? I like something when I pick it up that works, looks nice. I keep things clean in here for the same reason. It's just me. Now also, Vicky was making comment. She said, after I showed her the video on, on making the plane, and I was planing, holding the plane at the front like this, not like this. She said, but why weren't you holding the handle? Well, it's a different process. When I'm doing edges of boards, I always hold the plane like this. Because I can steer, I have much more control rather than up on the top here, not really knowing where I'm at. On, this, on the side here, I can use my fingers to keep it in line as I'm, as I'm passing past there. So it's basically a little depth gauge. Uh, if I'm doing a surface, like if I've got a couple of boards that I've joined together and I want to flatten it out, then I'll go to the front handle here and I can get a fair bit of weight down on that front handle, which is... Did I tell you it's an afterthought? <laughs> it's after I glued the, the rock maple to the jarrah, I had a couple of pieces hanging out either end, and I was about to cut it off, and I thought, hello, I think I've got something here. That might be a handle. And blow me down, it is. There we go. All right, what's the next thing? So there's my plane. I love it, and it cuts beautifully, and it's a good weight. It's slightly lighter than my steel planes, but there's enough mass there for it still to work. And I would have loved to have gone to the show and taken this with me so you guys could have actually picked, picked it up and had a go with it. You, you would have loved it. Maybe the next one. Let's see, if I go to the Sydney show, you can play with it there. Uh, and w I've already paid for the Brisbane show, so when it comes up, I'll be going and I'll bring that with me. All right, let's have a look. What's the last thing that we've got on the show? And we're up to 55 minutes. I'll go and get the plane. It should be dry enough now for me to... Oh, that looks beautiful. <laughs> what do you think? That will still dull up a little bit to be more satin. But I'm going to take the masking tape off. I love this. And the reveal. 
and the other side. There, now isn't that looking a little special? And we'll put the knob on. <laughs> I love this, absolutely love it. There we go. There's the knob on the black base. And you wait till that paint over the next day or two, that paint will end up being very much satin. All that gloss will disappear. Now, I'm going to remind you what it looked like. <laughs> this. Now, as I say, remember what this looks like now. Here we go. That's how it was when I bought it. That's how it was. And this is how it is now. I can bring it up closer because I know you want to see it. <laughs> and when I, I'm not going to touch this part. I might hit it with a buff to see if I can bring those black points out. But that's as far as I'm going to go with conditioning the base. Slowly coming along. That's a little project that we've got happening. All right. I don't have any competition on this week. Next week, um, we might... Look, I don't know what we're, <laughs> what we're going to do next week. But maybe we'll do some more work on that box. Maybe we'll do some more work on the plane. Maybe we'll do some more work with... Um, making starting a block plane or we might work on the dressing table but anyway it's going to be fun so go over to this this here and this here if you like the show give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel there's a link down there thanks for watching look after yourselves and i shall see you next week bye